This morning now we're meeting um, with Bill Millen, who was born in Nipigon and has lots of good information on the history of Nipigon. And Bill wants to start by telling you something about this building that we're sitting in right now. When I, when I was a young boy, this building was a hole in the ground. There used to be a store here at one time. I presume it burnt down because I was ahead of my time. But anyhow, it, it has uh, been a wonderful community to live in. I've been here my entire life and hopefully I'm here for a while longer. So Bill, maybe you could start with your memories of where you went to school. Well, I went to school in uh, the Nipping and Public School. It's been enlarged a few times since then, since then and I can recall climbing over the snow banks in the winter to, at the railroad tracks and you couldn't see from one side of the street to the other for the snow banks. And, stuff like that, but uh, things have gone quite well. So was it Nipigon Consolidated when you That's went right. to school then? That's right, Nipigon Consolidated School. Right. And I know it held a lot of pupils in those days. Yeah. Now, did you have high school here? There was high school here, yes, at that time. Yeah. Okay, so that was in the basement of the, of the present pu day public, public school. school yeah. Right, right. So then you went on from all your education to what did you do when you were first employed? I went to work on the, for the CPR on the tracks as a section man and the wages were good. We were getting two bits an hour. <laughs> Won't go very far today but it seemed to work at that time. Did you work just in this area or? Yeah, no, right, right here in the Pagan. Yeah, okay. right here in the Pagan. What kind of things would you have done in those days? With a lot of things that they're not doing today. We had to carry the rails, we had to carry the ties and all that kind of stuff. And uh, now we have machinery to do all that work and it looks a lot, a lot easier. So what made you leave the CPR? What made me leave the CPR? Well, it was only a temporary job when I left school anyways. Okay. And. Uh, from there on, I went to uh, I went to the mill in Red Ro in uh, Nipigon, that little little mill down down that's not no longer there. And uh, from there on, I had many vocations till I went in the trucking business, and after that, I, I got a call to go to Red Rock for uh, the needed truck for three days, and about three and a half years later, there was no more work for the truck, so I stayed at the mill and. And I did my rest of my life working at the mill. So, what job did you have at the mill? At the mill, I was after I was done with the trucking. I was in the stores department, and then I went down into the uh, finishing room where we uh, prepare all the paper delivered to the customers. So, what was the name of the mill when you first started? Oh, you're going back now. You're going back to St. Lawrence, oh, I believe. Lawrence. Yeah. Because St. Lawrence had their woods operation. Here, yeah. but the mill in Red Rock. In Red Rock, yeah. So you saw so quite a few changes. Oh, heavens, yes. In the mill. Heavens, yes. The time when the boats came in over there. In boats, we used to load the boats too. Right. Boats by train. Right. Now, now a lot of paper at that at the end was going by transports. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Um, maybe your. Well, just I don't know. General other memories you have of this part of town, maybe the the growth from Nipigon used to be booming down here. Maybe you've got memories of something special downtown. I don't know whether you believe me or not, but the, the streets used to be lined up here with the lumberjacks. They called them at that time, eh? In the spring and in the fall, when the work in the woods were at standstill due to the seasons, and the streets were loaded with. Lumberjacks. They came in, was there enough rooming houses or hotels? They, I them? don't know where they all stayed, but there they was many, many, many of them, Glenna. So that's why when we interview other people, lots of restaurants. Yeah, lots of restaurants. There's always lots of places to eat, day and night. Right. Day and night, yeah. Not yeah, like now, we, you have a hard time to find a place to eat anymore. Yeah, you're right. The tourists coming to now, uh, they don't have much choice in restaurants. And the same as if you want to go out for dinner somewhere, you're, you're going back to where you go for coffee during the day or something like that. 
Yeah, that's a different, uh, different. a different front street. Yeah, that's what I'm it sure. was, right? Um, so you also then would remember such things as the starting of the highway. Mm-hmm. I can remember when they opened the, the bridge over here. That was a big celebration and in Nippy and not only the other communities on the other side, but joining us across Canada. Eh? Right. Would you have uh, had a car in those days to go mm -hmm. across the bridge? No, I, I was too young when the first bridge oh, first right. opened. I was too young then. What about your family? Have a car to go my, across? My there? father had a, a, an old 1925 star car. Yeah. That was that was the only car in our family at that time. <laughs> So when the bridge opened and you went across to the other side, where would that have road gone to then? You could go to get through to Scriber. You could go as far as yeah. Scriber. And was it up Highway 11 too? Part way, not too far at the time. Okay. That that I can recall now. I might be wrong, but we see. I didn't know if it went as far as Beardmore or not. It could have. It could have. Because there'd be bush bush roads all the way through there anyhow. Right. Yeah. Did you ever go down as a young person and watch the building of the bridge? At times. But uh, my parents were a little, little on the strict side and confined to where we go because you went, no matter where you went, you're going into the bush somewhere, you know. So it's not like today. Right. Streets all over. Right. And where did your family sort of live when you were here? In uh, the CPR station. Oh, at the oh, I'm my sorry. Father, my father was a station agent. I was born in, uh, across the other side of the tracks where the big warehouse used to be. That used to be a station, and, and then when they built the new station, we moved into the new station. Oh, I didn't know that so, you lived there. Yeah, the train used to, like they had the order boards at the, in those days, no radio control trains. and. Uh, the order board was right next to my bedroom window, and that's where we used to start blowing the whistle for the, the r railroad crossing. But you got used to it, you didn't hear the whistle anymore. <laughs> Maybe you can remind us something about the trains then, about CP trains. So that would have been the uh, passenger trains Passenger today. trains and lots of freight trains. Not like today, uh, you you count the cars on the trains and they're up in, in 150, 170 cars. Right. Them days you had 20 some cars, right. you had a big train. Did you ever get to ride the train to different places? I worked on, uh, I worked on uh, as, a, as a switch or a trainman for a couple of years. Okay. Because your family did, in those days, did they get free travel on the train? Yeah, we had a railroad pass, yeah. Go to Thunder Bay then often? Yeah, you, well, it's, the people that worked for the railroad still got it, but there's no passenger train through here now. Right. I didn't know if you had traveled a distance on oh, the yeah, train. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how we always went on our holidays, by train. Yeah. And trains have changed for yeah, sure. Then. Definitely. Right. See, my mother was brought up in in uh, White River after she moved, the, her family moved from England, or Wales, and uh, we used to go and visit our grandparents or just about every school holiday. and. Uh, Always by train. Okay. It was so, the only way we could have gotten to White River at that time, anyways. So you were commenting before that people joined the organizations. There wasn't a lot to do. Um, when do you recall there first being a movie theater here? Then. Well, we used to have movies in the school every every so often. Oh, okay. They'd have them on uh, weekends, and. I think it was around 25 cents or something like that. It didn't cost very much to go to a movie. So was there not a movie theater over where Max is now? Pardon me? Was there not a movie theater around by Max, where Max is now? No, not no? that I'm aware okay. Of. I thought no. there was at one time. No, that used to be a dance hall. Oh, okay. They could have put movies on there too, but it used to be a hall. Was it a community dance, a community hall there? Partially, uh yeah. As far as I know. Then we had the uh, Finn Hall too on uh, Fort Street. And the Finn Hall became the Elks Hall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What about um, 
But then the, the, you must remember the building of the theater then. That yeah. must have been a big occasion it was, here. It was something very good. Because I know when we were teenagers, we'd go to a midnight show and and we'd go to one of the restaurants here and, and get a barbecue chicken and we'd have a lunch in the, in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, even that has changed now. So oh. we went from nothing to having lots of movies and now yeah. we're back to everybody watching things at home now. That's true, yeah. Right, right. That's true. Right. So many changes, Donna. Right, right. Any other changes in the way of well, the church then. You were very, very involved in the church and it's... Well, my, my, my mother was a strong Anglican and uh, we went to the Anglican church Sunday school and whatnot until uh, it had to close down during the Depression. Oh. Then we went to the United Church. Oh. Yeah. So this was the United Church just down the street just from down the... Just down the... Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. Second Street. The Second Street, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I always couldn't believe that wasn't called Church Street because it has so many churches yeah, on it at one yeah, time. Yeah. Right, yeah. And so everybody has a new church now. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, quite it's a change. A lot of people have given up on churches too, don't go anymore. Right. Why, I don't know, but... Yeah. Well, as you said, there's too many other things for people yeah. to do. Yeah. And I can even remember when you were talking, you and Norman were talking about the hockey was that rule that you don't have any hockey till after church yeah. on a Sunday. Yeah. And now it doesn't matter. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. And Sunday you got your mom dressed us all up nice, made nice clean clothes for Sunday and you don't get dirty on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> any other memories of downtown businesses or other? Oh, so many changes like uh, with the modernization of equipment and whatnot, you used to see that the people that were on relief and whatnot shoveling the, the snow banks and digging ditches along the street and in, in the snow and stuff like that. And that's all changed now. Everything is machinery now. Everything's right? mechanized too. Yeah. Right, right. What about um, the difference in your policing? The policing? The policing compared to when you were a kid. Well, we had a, a municipal police at that time. Yeah, they were always municipal police. Very many or just one or no, two? One or two. But the, we always, there was always a mounted police here at that time too. Mounted police? Yeah. Okay. But you wouldn't have had, did you think you had much crime in those days? Well, I don't know whether it's any different than, than today. You still have crime. You'll always have some kind of crime. crime. But, uh, no, I would say things are pretty well the same. Okay. I know we have uh, a lot more presence of police around today, but yeah. a lot of changes again. No, because uh, when you were saying about your dad's car, there wouldn't have been a lot of cars either. No, there weren't too many cars. Mostly trucks. When I look at old pictures, yeah. I see trucks. Oh, square box trucks. Right. Everything was square. Even my dad's car was just like a little black square. <laughs> well, and, and the road to Thunder Bay would have been just a gravel road? Pretty well, yeah. It was a big trip to go by car to Thunder Bay at one time. Was it a day trip and back, up and back in a day? I can't recall whether we did it in a day or not. Most of the time we had to go to Thunder Bay and it was medical emergency or something like that and you didn't just go for Sunday drive. I know my mom and dad uh, started their marriage out in Dorian and they were in Dorian for several years and we used to go and visit a lot of people in Dorian when I was a kid in the summertime. giving me hints here. Yeah. <laughs> what about a hospital then? You must have been... There was no hospital no, here then. Oh, there was no hospital? No. First aid post? No, we had doctor's offices, that's all. Just the doctor's offices? Yeah. Oh, so you would definitely remember the building yeah. of the hospital. Yeah, definitely. Wow. That, was quite the, that was quite the occasion, the hospital building. Oh, yeah. so you've seen three different 
versions of a hospital That's here, true, or four, yeah. if you count that little tiny one yeah, where Harvinson's yeah, lived. Yeah. Four different uh, styles of hospital. That was really one of the first uh, medical bases was Harvinson's house there. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So we've had a lot of doctors. When you're talking about a lot of different people, we've had a lot of oh, doctors come and go. Yes. And, uh, in your time, we were fortunate that they were resident doctors. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they came here and they stayed here. It's made their home here. So you must have also gone to the dentist on the dental car. That's right. That was not a pleasure. No, that's for sure. Right. Don't stop once you open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, anything? I'm just trying to think of. Uh, I'm at a loss. I've tried to think, Bill, because I know you have so much information, but I have to keep thinking about what other things you... So were you ever a hockey player or a baseball no. player? Or? No, I was more... I was a chubby little boy and and uh, didn't get involved in a lot of sports and stuff like that. Were you a spectator? No, I was always a good spectator, yeah. <laughs> Not a fisherman? No, uh, my brother was a fisherman. I'm just trying to think of things that you did then as yeah. a child or as a young person. Well, we used to play on the streets, and we had Boy Scouts at that time, and right. stuff like that. And uh, we used to get out a lot on uh, on the weekends in the summertime, you know, as Boy Scouts. And, right. Uh, so it was an outdoor yeah outdoor type of thing at outdoor activities. activities for young yeah. people in those days. Like going up to where the cross is up on the mountain there. That was a big chore for us because it was all bush across there. Right. Even where I'm living right now was with bush behind the schoolyard. It was all bush. Right. Okay, well, that's good. We've learned a, a little bit of history from you, and I'm sure we could do it again if we had a few more questions. But yeah. anyway, thank you, Bill, for sharing yeah. some of your memories with us. No problem. This morning we're going to chat with Bill Millen again. Uh, this time I'm hoping that we can get a few answers on the Little Old Mill and the Red Rock Mills um, because they were a big part of Nipigon history. So Bill, first thing I had down, was there another name for that mill besides Little Old Mill? Like was there an owner of it? God, I can't answer that. Okay, it's, it, everybody just calls it yeah, little, the Little Old Mill. Little Old Mill, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So was it for... Um, just for pulp? That's all they made. There was pulp and it was shipped out in bundles and uh, went to other manufacturing plants. And shipped out by truck or trail? No, train. Oh, by train, yeah. because the mill was adjacent to the truck. There wasn't there. Too, ma too much uh, transport in them days. Okay, okay. And would there have been a, a fair number of people who worked there? Yeah, not that many, but I couldn't give you the exact amount, but... Uh, I would say probably 20, 25 people shift. Ah, uh, for shift. For shift, okay. you know, something like that. Okay. So where would they have got the wood from in those days? In the bush. In the bush. Locally. Locally, yeah. Locally, yeah, locally in the bush. Saw everything was local, yeah. Can you remember, was it one type of wood compared to another? Yeah, it was straight, it'd be straight uh, either spruce or balsam, I would say, that's all. Okay, okay. That's something that, that is interesting yeah. because everybody, as I say, just calls it a little mill. So I didn't yeah. know how many people worked there. No, that, that's, as far as I know, it was, it's, I don't remember the name of it. Right. So that's something that we need to look into is yeah. what the name of that was then. Did um, both mills ever work at the same time when, the, when Red Rock came into being? Was It wasn't too much longer after the, when they started again in Red Rock. At the little mill closed. Okay. So I remember when I came here, Jones has had a house down there. Was there any other houses? Yeah, and there was Steens lived down there for years. Oh, okay. And there was uh, one long building there, I think it was divided into two or three uh, units, and then there was a couple of houses. 
Okay, so people actually lived down by the mill yeah, then, on the yeah. site then. Steens lived there for years and years. Okay, because I can remember, I was saying, if you cross the tracks, there's a trail that goes up on the mountain, and in that trail, on the other side of the track, is a huge cement basement. So I often thought there must have been houses over there. There was, probably was something there sometime or other, but I'm not aware of it. Right, okay. It's just interesting that yeah. there was people down yeah. there at that time. And then there was a caretaker at the mill when it closed for quite a while yeah, before I, I it was torn so, down. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine so. I can just remember his name was Ernie. I can't remember yeah. the rest of his I name there, but he that, was David. the caretaker for a long time yeah. there. Yeah, Interesting. Have you any idea of when that mill might have been built down there? It would have a clue, probably a long time before me. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I had no idea yeah. how, how long it would have oh, been there. It was there for quite a while. So do you remember now when the Red Rock one was going to build? Because the rumor always was that it could have been built in Nipigon, but the council here didn't want the mill, so it went to Red Rock. Yeah. You ever hear that? I heard that story, and it, uh, the Red Rock Mill actually started in the, the late 30s, eh? Okay. And then, then, then it closed, and then opened back up again, a different company. I think the first company, I'm not sure what happened, but it was left vacant for some time, and then, and then St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence took over. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then St. Lawrence must have really expanded it then yeah, yeah. To, to build there. Finished it off. So I, whether the other company went bankrupt or not, I don't know, but oh. it, whatever happened, it, it didn't get completed in the first round. Interesting. So you did mention before when we were talking that you first started going to that mill with your truck. I started uh, with my truck, definitely. I, no, 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 that's wrong. When I left the little mill, I went to Red Rock. I went to work on the railroad, and then when that was over, I, came, I went to Red Rock. Oh, okay. That way. Then I saved enough money to buy a truck, and that's when I went over on the trucking business. And then I got called back after I'd been out for, say, maybe three, four years. And they called me back for three days, and I stayed there for about 35 years. Ah. So when you went with your truck, what were you doing with the truck? Just hauling, cleaning up garbage and everything around the mill and where they were doing a little construction, hauling some gravel and hauling the mud away and okay. stuff like that. Okay, you know? okay. It's more or less construction work. Okay. Oh, so that's sort of when they were still working yeah, on the mill yeah. then. Yeah. So when you did get a job at the mill, where did you work? I started in the stores department. Ah, stores, yeah. right. And, and I you went from there to the finishing room. Okay. Herman remembered working with you unloading cement. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, during construction, they used a lot of cement. Some weeks we would load, unload five, six cars of cement. Wow. Yeah, he just he said he yeah. remembered that, um, a lot of cement. So that was in the early building years yeah. again then. Then when they had a contractor in there, the contractor was doing it. I used to do, we used to do that. After our day's work was done, we then load a couple of cars of cement. Ah, okay. Can you uh, give an estimate of how many people might have worked there when your early years? Oh God, I can't, can't do that. 200? Yeah, 200, 300, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. So then it went from St. Lawrence to Brompton? I think that's how it worked out. Right, because Brompton then had the woods, woods department yeah. here in Nipigon. Yeah. Right. So actually the mill then employed a lot of people because it had all the woods yeah, would, people as well as the woodlands. It would be two different departments. So it would be the woodlands department and, uh, and the mill department would be two different. Right. Two different so when it first started, do you think it went pulp and paper right away? Or was it pulp first? We in Red Rock made made craft paper right off the bat. Right off the bat? Right off the bat. Okay. And that was taken out by truck or transport or boat? By, mostly uh, by 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 rail. Okay. And then the transport started fitting in. Right, because in the, in the yeah. latter years, yeah. lots of transports. Lots of transport. Right. And do you remember at all by boat? Oh yeah, we loaded quite a few boats too in the summertime. Right. 
Yeah, right. he went to the States. Oh, to the States. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And that would have meant that the area there was quite deep. The water, the well, water. The, the, the lake boats don't take that much water, not oh. like the big ocean liners. But I just thought maybe when they're loaded, they're going to be well, a little just, bit deeper. They keep them balanced pretty well, and they make sure they got the water underneath them. Right, right. <laughs> okay. I don't. I just don't. I've seen pictures of the boats, yeah. but I didn't really know. Oh, don't you recall uh, all the pulpwood boats that they used to load up there? I heard about that, but yeah. I didn't. Re I didn't oh, yeah. remember they that. Used to load a lot of. Uh, Pulpit on boats and shipped it away. Well, I remember hearing from the Sawmill Point. Mm -hmm. They loaded a lot of boats in that area. Yeah, right. Right across there. Yeah. So, along with the old mill, there was Sawmill Point. What What did they do at Sawmill Point? They did. Uh, they did have a tie mill there one time. Had a what? Tie mill made railroad ties. Oh, mill. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Is that where the sawdust came from then? Yeah. And it built up that whole mm -hmm. bit of property yeah. there. And where would the ties have got been loaded on trains or well, on loaded, boats? Loaded on the trains and taken away. Hmm. Well, that's one piece of history that I had not yeah, heard no, before. They, they manufacture a lot of ties here. Ah, a special kind of wood for ties? I imagine it'd be just spruce. Spruce, okay. And then they likely would have uh, put creosote on them or something. Oh, yeah, after they, they that. creosote them after, yeah. Right, right. They didn't do that here. No, no. Just the wood chips, mm -hmm. um, because I remember, and people still talk about the Sawmill Point, which mm -hmm. is, is a neat name then for that mm -hmm. area as well, right. And I was just um, thinking that when it opened in Red Rock, the mill, was it a pretty small town at that time? And then they, because when you look at all the houses that look the same there, were they company built? They were company houses. So they built those to provide housing for all the people yeah, who came people, to work. And people could buy them after, too. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, so they owned them for a while and people yeah. leased them from yeah. them. Yeah, Rent, rented them, yeah. Right, because when you hear history from a lot of people, they came from other places. Yeah. So there must have been... A lot of, a lot of uh, employees transferred from plants in Quebec up here. Okay. That's where a lot of people came from. So that's where we get some of those French people. Yeah, yeah. Is coming from southern, no, from Quebec. Okay, yeah. okay. I wonder why they would come here. Is the economy not as good in Quebec then? Well, I mean? they were working for the company, and it's, oh, same company. Same company, and they moved up here. Okay. Whether they closed their work down there or not, I don't know. Okay. That I couldn't say. So we had St. Lawrence, we have Brompton, then we had. Was Norampak yeah, next? Norampak, I think. Norampak was then when it closed. Yeah, yeah. So really three companies worked there. So I also remember then there being a Woodlands operation in Beardmore. Oh yeah, Beardmore was one of the wood, wood limits. Uh, right. And that dealt with a lot of the woods people yeah. in that area. Yeah. Um, or the, used to come down the river. Oh, okay. Tell us a little bit about that. I can't, you uh, can't not, tell not about too, the river. Not too fussy about it, but uh, uh, used to close the living river up, and then they'd let the, they had the wood all in booms up above, right? And let them go, and they'd catch them down here, right at the mill, right over to the mill, and then uh, put them in booms in there, and then we'd just use them up on the slasher. Okay, so there was actually people who had to haul those logs, or was there a, a conveyor belt that took them in, or from, did you do from it the like, water? Yeah. From the water, they wound up on a, they called it a jack ladder. The logs were, were men there straightening them up on the jack ladder, and they went right into the saws and into the, oh. to the they had to be barked too. Right. So oh, that's how it all worked out. You're right, because there are lots of pictures of the yeah. big log booms, especially in yeah. Lake Helen, yeah. coming lots down the river. Big, big, big ones. Right. Yeah. Half the bay filled up sometimes. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that. It's pretty cool and interesting to see the the size of the log booms yeah. that there was then. So they had to, so it would be a specific time, you're saying, that they closed the river in, in order to catch them when they come down there. You had to, they had to do it that way. They'd run a, a, a string of booms on, on both sides, let the wood down, and they'd catch it in another big boom, and then it would... 
move it over to let it move over to Red Rock. So there was tugboats working down tugboats there, working moving there. Them. tugboats, and a lot of it was done by current too. Eh? Oh right, right, big yeah. current there, yeah. right. Interesting, anyway, how that uh, how that happens, and then. I can't remember the era now when they quit coming down the river. There's people who know those yeah. dates, but um, that's because there was not enough wood above above coming down above to come down, and they brought it all by truck then. So did you work there when they started bringing it by transport? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, after I was there, I was there for 35 years. Went through a lot of uh, different uh, different movements of wood. Right. And a lot of different distances. That's true. Yeah. Don't you remember the big stockpiles that were cut up and uh, piled up in the, in the wood yard? Right. And right. You could hardly see the tops of them. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Came from a long way. Yeah. Right. Anything else you remember? What did you get paid when you worked, say, at the little mill and, and at Red Rock Mill? I think at the little mill we started at thirty-two cents an hour when I started there, something like that. And when it was fifty-five, I think when. It, First went to Red Rock. That's before I got in the trucking business. Right. I think it was fifty-five cents. And, wow. then, and then when I left there and came back, well, it was all together. Things things were, things were starting to go up. I was getting a dollar and a quarter an hour when I built my house. Wow. <laughs> wow. What would you have got when you quit? Can you remember? No, I can't. I didn't quit. I retired. Well, when you retired, sorry. And it was up around twenty dollars, I think. Wow. Somewhere in that so area. you really saw a real yeah. big difference yeah. in the employment there. Yeah, well, everything else went up. Your right. dollar didn't go any further, really. Right, <laughs> right. Interesting. Anything else that you can tell us, maybe, about the, about the mill, the departments, or...? It was a good place to work. Pardon? It was a good place to work. Right. And did, you, did they always have a pension plan for employees at the mill? Yes, as far as I know. Okay. And uh, union? Union, oh yes, definitely. Union early? or uh, Union was there all the time. I was there pretty well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if the, what else you might have remembered about that. Oh, there's lots of things, but you'd have to poke my memory to get what you want to right, know. Right, right. I just think, I'm, I'm thinking when I, the size of the community is what I was thinking because the basic community there was the um, uh, the bottom end. Pri no, the prisoner of war camp yeah. was in one area then. That where they used to, alongside the railroad track there. That's where the prisoner of war camps were. And then they moved, and then so they were gone by the time the mill was built. Oh no! Oh no! No no no! I don't know. I don't know. They okay. Were, was there when I was in my late teens? Okay. So people lived in that area later, not just prisoners yeah, of war. Just uh, prisoner of war camp was there. I don't believe anyone lived in those camps. Okay. They were construction camps, and they used them for the prisoner of war. Okay, okay. And then uh, you must have really seen a boom in the town then, when you think that um, there wouldn't have been many stores there, or the school. School was there. Yeah, you, you, usually you see a town, you see a school. A school the first and a up. church too. Yeah, the big two churches were there. Right, right. And can you remember when they built the Red Rock Inn? Red Rock Inn, I think, was built from the from, at the first mill. The mill bought, built the Red Rock yeah. Inn. Oh, they built and it. That would have been for. Well, the construction crew and and the staff that had to. Man, the office and stuff like that. Okay, okay. People that didn't have homes. Right. Yeah. And then Quebec Lodge was built by one of the companies as yeah. well. Yeah. And maybe called Quebec because all those workers came from Quebec. Yeah. Could have been. That was sort of a special place, though. Yeah, it was for. always there. Right. As far right. as I can remember. Hmm. Interesting how it how a town develops. Yeah. Um, according to the population, I guess. True, that's the way it goes. Well, look at here, when I was a kid, there was maybe half a dozen houses on the other side of the track. Right. A so, couple of garages. So when you built your house on McCurdy, there wouldn't have been very many houses up there. Not too many. <coughs> and you knew everybody. Now, I didn't know anybody on McCurdy. <laughs> 
No, oh, we always say McCurdy, McCurdy on the Hill is the healthy place to live because all you 90-year-olds have lived on McCurdy. <laughs> fresh, so air, fresh air on the top. Fresh air on the top up there, that's for sure. Yeah. And And you're right because that's what we used to know when the mill was working right. You could smell Red Rock in Nipigon when the south wind blew. But people always said the smell's bad, but the money is good. This this property we're sitting in right now belonged to the McCurdy's at one time. Right. This whole block. Right. The so there's another lot of history would be the McCurdy's. Okay. And my aunt married one of the McCurdy boys. Oh, okay. There you are. Good. That's good. That's lots of information on uh, the mills, and thank you, Bill.